Welcome to Fun with Facepalm. Yeah, I haven't done this in a while. I was like, hey, it's about time to read some wonderful stories about people showing off their stupidity. So put on your face pads and let's go. The movie theater in town was going through all sorts of power failures all evening. The backup generator had been keeping us running for a while, but it had to be restarted twice, meaning we lost power twice, and each time we had to reset the projection machines. Well, this took time. Well, the last time, it looked like the projection screens weren't going to cooperate. So my manager comes down looking incredibly stressed and tells me and my two colleagues that we need to go to the screens and explain that we can't get the films back up, that we're gonna give them a full refund and complimentary tickets at the front desk. Everyone is clearly frustrated and upset cause it's ruined their evening, but almost everyone is understanding and they're friendly to the staff, except for one woman. Why can't you just put the film back on? Uh, the projection machines are taking too long to reboot. They usually take only a couple of minutes, but because of two large shutdowns and only the past hour, it looks like it's going to take hours, if not at all. I'd rather wait than get a refund, if I'm honest. I want to watch the rest of the film. I'm sorry, but there's no guarantee you'll be able to watch the film at all. I don't understand why. Can't you just push play? Then a customer pipes up. Do you really think it's that easy? That they be talking to idiots like you and giving you refunds? Just shut up and fill out the refund form. And go home. That's what the rest of us are trying to do. I still don't understand why the film won't play. We eventually got through all 130 refunds. And we were absolutely exhausted. My manager gave us all free drinks and thanked us. I still have no idea why that woman couldn't understand the problem. I work for a rather large group of dealerships. We answer the phone for like 14 different dealerships and collision centers, plus for the head office. And it's important to note that each of our dealerships have service and parts departments, and they deal with specific types of cars. Here is a call that I got. Good afternoon, this is the head office. My name's speaking. In the background, I hear a male's voice. Followed closely by a female voice. Um, parts, please. For which dealership? The caller asks the one to the side. Which dealership? Um, it don't matter. At this point, I'm hitting my head up against the desk. What kind of car do you have? Um, Saturn? I scream internally. Then I transfer to the right dealership. I'm delivering pizzas. On the receipt is printed the address. I put the address into my GPS and go. When I get there, the house number on the receipt doesn't match any houses. So I call the customer. It's raining heavily. Hello, Mr. So-and-so? Hi, I'm so-and-so with the pizza place. I have your order, but I'm having trouble finding your house. Yes, sir, but I'm standing here at the address, and there's no house. Can you just verify your address for me, please? Uh, no. I'm not giving you my address again. You have it. Just take it there. Sir, I am there, and there is an obvious problem, and the address is not right. Can you please? And how was that my problem? Well, sir, without the right address, I won't be able to deliver your pizza. Ah, I see the problem. On the receipt it says 123 Street, and South Street is a completely different street. Fine, now hurry up. It took me a few minutes to get there, because South Street is about five miles away. About time! Hope you don't think you're going to be getting a tip for this. Get it right next time. Sir, this receipt says you place the order online. So, what's that got to do with anything? When you place the order, you had to type in the address, right? Yeah, so what? You're late. The address on the receipt is printed out exactly the way you typed it when you placed the order. What's your point? You made a mistake when you put in the address. 
Are you saying I don't know my own address? No, sir. Are you calling me stupid? Um, I think that's kind of self-explanatory. No, sir. It's not my fault you can't find my damn place. Maybe you need to get better at your job. Sir, the computer doesn't lie, and I have no problems finding addresses, if they're correct. After looking at the receipt and seeing the mistake, he threw his money at me and slammed the door. I spent the next few minutes picking up the money in the rain. It was exact change, no tip. In total, this order took me 30 minutes, and I missed out on two deliveries dealing with this idiot. I work at a coffee shop, and we try to give customers a chance to customize their drinks so that it's right to their liking. We just have several simple questions with their order. Here's an example of how complicated some people make it. I'd like to have a cappuccino, please. Sure. What size do you like? Um, the middle one. Okay, so a medium. What type of milk would you like? I'm on the verge of telling them the choices. What do you mean? I've never been asked that before. Cow's milk? I'm trying hard not to smart off. I'm sorry, we just try to give you options. I meant skim milk, 2%, whole or soy. Medium? I'm sorry, what type of milk? The customer is visibly upset. Whatever the medium one is. Okay, so medium, 2% cappuccino. And that will be your total. The coffee chain never asked me this many questions. <sighs> To begin with, my husband is definitely very intelligent. He's just in that category of very intelligent with book smarts, but common sense has gone out the window. Early on in our dating, making us in our late teens, early 20s, we were walking around the mall and we pass a Catholic priest. Well, my future husband makes a double take. What's up? Was that a Catholic priest? Yeah. I thought Hollywood made those up, like nuns. Nuns are a thing too. What? Then he looked at his briefcase. Do you think that's an exorcism kit? No, it's not. First of all, they don't just carry that stuff around. I'm pretty sure they gotta get their approval from the Vatican before they do exorcisms. And that could take some time. I'm gonna go ask. Leave the priest alone. And he started following the poor priest and later informed me when he returned that the priest opened his briefcase to show that it was only paperwork. I work at a retail outlet. It's been a few weeks since the recent health crisis and our store has new temporary policies like customers have to wait in line to be admitted and they have to go through security. No more than 200 customers are allowed in the store at a time. Employees who are scheduled to work do not have to wait in line and they don't count toward the limit. Unfortunately, this happened. It's around 10.55 a.m. and I'm about to walk into the building because my shift is at 11 a.m. A fairly new co-worker is regulating the line and as I enter into the door, he stops me. Excuse me, you have to wait in line. I work here. Doesn't matter, you have to wait like everyone else. I'll be late if I wait. Not my problem. Get back in line. No, I have to get in. He physically is blocking me. You can't go in. You have to wait. Get in line. Knowing that I wouldn't be able to get past him, I just go back to the end of the line, which is very long and stretches around the side of the store. It's 11.05 and my phone rings. No, I'm here, but I'm in line to get in the store. What? Why are you in line? You don't have to wait in line. Well, according to the door attendant, I have to. Wait, did you say the door attendant? Yep. Uh, for Pete's sake, just come in. Don't listen to what he says. I'll let you clock in late, and you can stay late to make up the time. So I get out of line and I head up to the front. My co-worker is waiting there. Hey, hey! I said you can't come in! You gotta wait in line! I work here. I'm already late. I need to go in. No! 
You do not have permission to go past this point. Yes, I do. I've got the boss's permission. I don't care if you got the boss's permission. You don't have permission. Get back in line. Just then, my boss comes up and one of my other co-workers behind him. First and foremost, you don't ever yell at anyone in this store. Second, they don't need your permission or anyone for that matter. She works here and because of you, she is now late for her shift. Go to my office and wait for me there. You come on in. Hey, co-worker, you take over as door attendant. The attendant was written up and sent home. And that was on his last chance. Apparently, it wasn't the first time he made an employee wait, nor was it the last. He wasted little time throwing out the last chance when he pulled the same stunt on the district manager. And he was fired. My high school U.S. history class has an abnormally high population of dim bulbs, much to the frustration of our teacher. We're playing a trivia game, and this is what the teacher asked. What's the capital of Iran? And one guy with complete confidence, Iraq! For a second, the teacher just stares at this guy, along with most of the other intelligent people in the room. May the fleas of a thousand camels infest your armpits. I work at a call center for monthly posted contact lenses. A customer calls up and she says, My daughter is so-and-so and her account number is this. Can I have my daughter's prescription info, please? I look it up. No, I'm sorry. I see that she has turned 18 and it's considered medical information. I cannot disclose to anyone except for her. Now that she's over 18, I'm gonna need her to call herself. She flips out. I pay for those lenses. She's only a child. Why won't you disclose the information? And so on. Over and over again, I state. This call is recorded, so you're asking me to break the law. I cannot disclose the information you're asking for. Okay, so I'm my daughter. Now give me the information. You just introduced yourself when you called. I already know that you're not. So if I called and told you that I was her, how would you know? That would be called fraud, and that's illegal. But how would you know? I strongly advise you against committing fraud. It's illegal. But how would you know? I strongly advise against committing illegal acts. I was thinking, are you seriously expecting me to tell you on a recorded call to go ahead and commit fraud? And you're seriously telling me on a recorded call that you intend to. I put a note on the file and asked the store to call the girl and ask her. And on the note, I said to suspect fraud, that way I could cover my bases. Now I know people commit fraud like this all the time and usually nothing comes of it since it's usually a relative and it has an approved deception to it. But maybe don't tell someone on the recorded call that you mean to break the law. Thank you very much for joining me for this edition of Fun with Facepalm. This was fun. I haven't done this in a while. Hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, blah. I found some stories from Reddit. It was posted under the missing 411, which isn't really David Polites. It's just people's stories, which his investigations kind of reminded them of. Creepy things that happens in the woods. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And Friday, we are going to have an I Don't Work Here Lady. And also, and I'm going to have another Neckbeard Grimtail. It's called The Fox and the Cat. I've already got it written up. I just need to read it out and get it ready for you guys. I'm looking forward to doing more of these. I'm having a lot of fun with it. So until next time, you all have a good day. And this is Dallas, signing off. <laughs>